It's Tuesday, October 19th, and the time for your Bobby this today morning news update. Two political scientists are predicting that more MPs within the ruling Bobby the Stable Party may not seek re-election as the party continues to prepare for the next general election. They were reacting to Sunday's announcement by Member of Parliament for St. Philip West, John King, that he was not contesting the poll constitutionally due in 2023. King's announcement follows a recent one by MP for the city, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, that he was bowing out of active politics. Senior political science lecturer Dr. Christina Hines tells Bobby this today she expects one or two more changes to the incumbent party's political lineup as part of a revitalization push ahead of the next election. Meantime, veteran pollster Peter Wickham explained that the recent announcements are a clear indication that the party is getting its house in order ahead of the next poll. He said as part of this process, older politicians, particularly those with no ministerial portfolios, could find themselves in the departure lounge of politics. Meanwhile, opposition leader Bishop Joseph Atherley believes John King, a first-time parliamentarian, was pushed out. Bishop Atherley tells Barbados today that King's decision not to seek re-election was somewhat surprising, considering that the 2018 general election, which he contested and won, was his first. He said, unlike King's colleague, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, who gave notice earlier this month, there were no obvious reasons why King would opt out. Otherly suggested that King, who is the minister in the Prime Minister's office with responsibility for culture and the National Conservation Commission, may have been forced out. In other news, Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Senator Lisa Cummins, has given the assurance that any changes to the COVID-19 protocols at the island's borders will have the safety of Barbadians at heart first and foremost. The assurance comes as the country continues to battle a deadly Delta variant outbreak and travelers raise concerns about the possibility of contracting the virus while vacationing here. It also comes as local hotels report significant cancellations in bookings as the variant continues to spread across the island. What we're seeing now is that there are some specific concerns that the industry has raised and they're not raising them from, their, from themselves, they're raising it because their visitors are raising it and, and they include Obviously, having to isolate in many countries around the world, Barbados is not one of the countries that typically has always had home isolation or hotel isolation. If you became positive on island, you had to go into a facility. Most of our visitors are coming from countries where they're used to isolating at home, and so this was something very new to them and they were very uncertain about that. With the increasing numbers that we're seeing here on a daily basis, our visitors are equally concerned. If I become ill overseas, am I going to have to go into a facility or into one of the isolation centers? And that's creating some angst in the market, and so you see cancellations for that reason. Secondly, you're also seeing concern among our visitors, and I spoke about this, about the level of vaccinations. Most of our source markets are well past what was previously described as herd immunity. Most of the travelers, we have less than 1% of the travelers coming into Barbados are unvaccinated, very few. Senator Cummins maintained that the current protocols at the airport and seaports had been successful in keeping COVID-19 at bay. We have every confidence in our public health officials that they have been assessing and will continue to assess the risk. Our border protocols have been exceptional. They have been restrictive, more restrictive than most places, and it is for that reason that they have worked. We have had, again, less than 1% of persons crossing our borders testing positive for COVID. And if we have positive cases at the border, they're detected at the border and isolated from in the community. So they have clearly worked. Any changes to the protocols now will have to also be based on that same risk stratification that ensures that we are having a, a, a set of protocols that are fit for purpose. So, you know, it's not as easy as it may look. It is a complicated thing, and we ultimately have a responsibility to ensure, uh, certainly from the Ministry of Tourism side and the entire tourism team, we have an obligation to make sure that we keep Barbados safe, 
but we also keep our visitors safe when they're traveling in or out of Barbados. That is a dual obligation that we have. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional developments now, Guyana's Health Minister, Dr. Frank Anthony, is urging people with HIV to get vaccinated against COVID-19. More in this report from News Source Guyana. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony has sounded the alarm on the high number of HIV-positive persons in Guyana who have not made themselves available to be vaccinated against COVID-19. The health minister said there are too many HIV-positive persons who have been shying away from getting vaccinated. And that decision is putting their lives at risk if they become infected with the virus, since their immune system is already compromised. It is um, recommended that persons with HIV take the COVID-19 vaccine because it's going to protect them. The benefits of getting vaccinated uh, far outweighs the risk of being vaccinated. And in some cases, those persons who would have had um, uh, immune, their immune system being compromised, in some of those patients, it's also recommended that they get a third dose of the vaccine. Or a booster shot. The health minister said any of the vaccines that are being currently administered in Guyana could be administered to an HIV positive patient. And finally, on the international scene, at least two dozen people have reportedly died and many are still missing following floods due to heavy rains in southern India. The details of that story in this Reuters TV report. Landslides and floods claimed dozens of lives in India's southern state of Kerala over the weekend. In hard-hit Kottayam, rescuers raced to clear debris from a bridge with an excavator. A resident described the extent of the damage. There are uh, four landslides happened there yesterday. Uh, the, the, uh, the hill behind me, uh, which has uh, brought all the water and other items, to the downwards. Uh, there are four, five shops here. This totally uh, washed out, washed out. The Indian Army and Navy were sent to Kottayam and Iduki districts to aid rescue efforts. Annual rainfall supports two-thirds of India's billion-plus population who live in rural areas and rely on farming. However, excessive rainfall sparks not only floods and landslides, but also waterborne diseases. In 2018, Kerala saw some of its worst floods in the century. They killed at least 400 people and displaced 200,000 more. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.